Mm -hmm. the way, the right? one thing I would correct him is under those burkas, the women have lots of makeup. <laughs> they're yeah. really, they're really dolled up. So, <laughs> Tonight, you saw Fareed Zakaria's special report on the terrible toll of the Iraq War, a war that may be reshaping the 2016 campaign. Fareed is here with me and also with us, special correspondent Jamie Gangel. News on the Republican who might be the biggest threat to Jeb Bush's presidential ambitions. Fareed, let's start with you. It's good to have both of you. Thank Fareed, you. I want to start with you. Is it good now, do you think, for the country that we're relitigating the Iraq War right now? Well, we're not really relitigating it, but you're certainly right. We're reanalyzing it because. Mm -hmm. There are lots of people at this point, you know, Donald Trump has said on 60 Minutes, he wants to go into Iraq, uh, put boots on the ground, and fight ISIS there. So you, in a sense, there is a call for a major new intervention. And one of the questions we have to ask is, why did the last one not work? Mm. Uh, unless we can learn the lessons from that. We're not talking this time about, you know, a far distant country that's very different. We're talking about going into the same country, fighting the same war. Again, surely we want to learn something this time around. Yeah, I was wondering, I, I was sitting there watching it with one of my producers, and we were all at NBC at the time, and we were saying, is this just so fascinating because we lived it? But it's fascinating because when you consider the information that we have now that we didn't have then, and now that Jeb Bush is, he's having to defend his brother. Tony Blair apologized you saw in, in your interview. Is this, what does this mean for his campaign that he's having to defend his brother? Can he live this down, so to speak? I think it's very tough. I think that, you know, people say that Bush, uh, George W. Bush is popular uh, in the Republican base. He's popular among some Republicans, but there are an awful lot of Republicans who are embarrassed by, you know, by watching this and this, the, the, there's a sort of uh, a series of so many errors mm -hmm. that when they want to then say, you know, Obama is incompetent or something, this is a very tough period to have to go through because it reminds you how many mistakes. You saw those, those photographs of how order just collapsed in Iraq. Donald Rumsfeld told the military, do not do anything. And then when people would ask, he'd say, stuff happens. Freedom is messy. Mm -hmm. To have to watch that again, I think it's very tough for somebody to come out of that thinking, oh, yeah, the Bush administration made all the right decisions. Listen to what Donald Trump uh, said to Jake Tapper on State of the Union. Right now, Iraq is a training ground for terrorists. Right now, Libya, nobody even knows Libya. Frankly, there is no Iraq and there is no Libya. It's all broken up, they have no control, nobody knows what's going on. So the on. world would be better off with Saddam Hussein 100%. and Gaddafi in power? 100%. Now, were, as far as Assad is concerned, let's What about the about human it. rights abuses? Let's talk about, well, you don't think they're happening now? They're worse now than they ever were. People are getting their heads chopped off, they're being drowned. They're, right now, they're far worse than they were ever under Saddam Hussein or Gaddafi. There are plenty of voters who agree with Donald Trump. There are plenty of voters, and of course, there were plenty of Republicans even at the time. Remember, uh, George Bush's Secretary of State, Colin Powell, basically had a view not, not so dissimilar, which was this is, these guys are bad guys, but they're in a box, keep them in a box. He went out for a two or three hour dinner with Bush, tried to convince him. Uh, it didn't work. In. And, and that's why I think this is important, because if Colin Powell was not able to convince Bush at the time, surely now we have all this history, as you said, we have all this knowledge. The next, before the next guy wants to jump in, we should at least be sure we understand what happened, why it didn't work, what could be, even if we're going to do stuff, at least how to do it better the next time. Jamie, do you want to comment on that? Or, but I, because I also want to go on and talk about the refugee crisis, the go comments. Ahead. Okay, go let's ahead. see. All right, let's talk about the, because Donald Trump made some comments about the refugee crisis that got my attention and it raised some eyebrows. Take a look at this. Would we be better off, as an example in Iraq, what are we doing? What are we doing? The migration was caused by Iraq, by Libya, by this. We want to give people freedom? We're not going to have our own freedom pretty soon if we keep doing this. We're not going to have our own freedom. They're not going to, they don't want freedom. It's like I saw somebody, I won't even say because it's embarrassing. We want it where the women over there don't have to wear the you-know-what. And then I said, oh, well, that makes sense. That's nice. Then I saw women interviewed. They said, we want to wear them. We've worn them for a thousand years. Why would anybody tell us not to? They want to. What the hell are we getting involved for? In fact, it's easier. You don't have to put up makeup. Look how beautiful everyone looks. Wouldn't it be easier? Wah. Right? Wouldn't that be easy? I'll tell you, if I was a woman, I don't want to. Wah. I'm ready, darling. Let's go. It's true. 
we're, we're sitting here laughing at it. And, and I, I asked Marco Rubio in the interview because Trump had also said the, this line about the Hispanics love me. Mm -hmm. And Rubio said, this is Donald being Donald. And what you just don't know is when does it end? When does he cross the line? When isn't it okay anymore? Or is he like an entertainer or a comedian? But, but, to, be who fair, can but to be fair to him, is, is, there is an element of real intelligence to what he's saying. There's a, there are a lot of people who say, those are, those are far distant cultures. Why are we coming in there imposing our values? I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm saying, as with everything Trump says, there's, there's always a kernel a of intelligence. Of, yes, there's yeah. a certain grain of truth. And it's the, probably the, one of the most interesting things you've ever heard about foreign policy, because he inserts some sort of humor in there. Right, but if any other candidate said that, yeah, yeah, yeah. they'd be out. By the mm -hmm. way, the right? one thing I would correct him is, under those burkas, the women have lots of makeup. They're <laughs> yeah. really, they're really dolled up. So, <laughs> so uh, let's talk about uh, Jeb Bush's advisors, Jamie. They gave him a PowerPoint presentation to donors today, as I understand, right. uh, listing Marco Rubio in one slide as a GOP Obama. Right. You caught up with Marco Rubio down on the campaign trail. So look, two things happened today. One is the, the Jeb Bush folks, they're looking at one number, 8%, sometimes 5%. Right. They, they are shocked and they're shaking things up. I was told today by sources very close to the campaign that they're ripping up the playbook. They're starting again. They said they have nothing to lose. And in the Bush family, there's an expression they use for sports games, which is unleash Chang. I think they are unleashing Jeb. At least that's the plan. Let's see if it works. He's right. going to be very outspoken. Let's listen to what he had to say. So if some might say, look, Jeb was your friend. He was your mentor. He helped you get elected. He helped you raise money. Uh, some might say this is a betrayal. Couldn't you have waited for another election? Well, I don't see the presidency that way. I don't think there's a line where we all wait and just hand the presidency off to each other because you've paid your dues. I'm running for president because I don't see anyone else on either side who's campaigning on the agenda and the views that I have. I don't view the presidency as some sort of honorific office that you just step aside and let someone else move forward. That's, there's, th this is not that kind of thing. We, we've got to move forward in this country and turn the page. Jeb has subtly, not so veiled, uh, painted you as Barack Obama 2.0, that you're young, inexperienced, first-term senator. Is Jeb Bush more experienced than you are? Is that fair? Well, I think there are people running that have more experience on the issues we faced 35 years ago, 25 years ago, or 15 years ago. When it comes to the issues before America in the 21st century, there's no one running that understands them or has shown better judgment on them than I have. And so when people run for the presidency or any office, uh, they will say things because they think it gives them a competitive advantage. And that's fine. I understand the politics of it. But that's not what the campaign is about for me. He's rising in the polls, but the gloves are coming off on both sides. Yeah, and he didn't seem to... He didn't like those questions so much. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but he answered. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Farid. I appreciate it. And I want to tell you that Farid Zakaria's special... I'm the leading state sponsor of terrorism.